I'm always down to do anything with you guys. I mean, I'm sorry. Whoa, this is getting crazy and intimate. Whoa, I can't believe I just said that. Are we on a date? <laughs> this is really intimate. Are we about to kiss right now? Hi guys, it's Sabrina and welcome back to another episode of Brutally Honest. Um, you may have noticed Oliver's still not here. He's just taking some time off and working on himself and doing his thing, but we love you, Oliver, and we hope you get back soon. So today's just me, and that's really scary, but also kind of exciting. I'm kind of into this. Um, in my episode with Mario, I said I was going to try a solo episode. So here we are. Um, it's just me talking, your little ear off. I feel good, though. This kind of feels like like when I film my YouTube videos and I'm just talking to the camera. This is kind of what it feels like, except there's a whole crew. <laughs> You guys don't see them, but they're here and they're all staring at me. So there's that. But that's OK. I do feel weirdly safe right now. I've had a weird week, actually. I've had a weird mental week. I've been doing pretty solid for the past couple months, but June's a weird month for me. So I'm excited to tell you guys all about it somehow throughout this. You guys are about to learn a lot about me. I'm not going to lie. And it's kind of terrifying, but... I'm excited. Hopefully you like me by the end of it. Yeah, the podcast has been incredible for me so far. Um, I've been, it's been hard a little bit for me because whenever I'm talking, I'm just in general, I'm a pretty awkward person when I meet people. And most of the guests that have been on, I didn't know too well before they came on. So I just ramble and I say things and I sound dumb. And then I watch it back and I'm like, oh my God. And then there's like, you guys just, you guys you guys tear me a new one a lot of the time, so, but it's okay. Continue to do so because it makes me better. So yeah, the podcast has been great, but I do tend to ramble on and say things that are just really stupid. And then I watch it back and I'm like, why would you say that? You are so dumb, but it's been great. Other than that, I'm excited to see how this um, episode turns out because it's just me talking to myself and to you. So I don't know. I'm I'm going to assume I'm still going to ramble on, but maybe it's not going to sound as dumb by the end of it. Hopefully. So since it's just me today, I wanted to try something different because if I sat here and just talked to you guys, I would tell you guys way too much information and you would probably just not. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. So I, I'm going to try something different and I'm going to help you guys get to know me better. So there's this social experiment from the 1990s. It's called 36 Questions to Fall in Love. And it's basically to see if two strangers can develop like an intimate connection just from asking each other a series of very, 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 very personal <laughs> questions. So I wanted to do that with you and see if you guys like would fall in love with me by the end of it. Um, maybe you will, maybe you won't. Let me know, please, down in the comments. So the questions are designed to help two people like gradually reveal more and more about themselves. But instead of a partner, I'm going to play it with you because I don't have a partner. So <laughs> Some of these questions may be difficult to answer with just one person or maybe triggering to some people. So we changed a few of them, but they're still here. I'm gonna, still going to answer all of them. And yeah, with that being said, let's get into it. So the first question is, given the choice of anyone in the world, who would you want as a dinner guest? Now, I wish I had like this like crazy deep like answer for you guys, but the truth is it would be Harry Styles. <laughs> and I, I can't lie, that's who it would be because I've been a fan of his since I was like 12 and I need that dream to be fulfilled. So that would be my <laughs> dinner guest. I honestly would have a lot of questions for him. I would ask him so many different things. Like, first of all, he's so talented and I would just want to know everything about like songwriting, everything. But also like even just being thrown into the industry at such a young age. He was like, what, 16? And he went zero to 100 in like a week. So yeah, I would have so many questions for him. And he's very pretty to look at. <laughs> Question number two, do you like being famous and in what way? This is interesting. Okay, listen, I don't consider myself famous. I consider myself to just kind of be in the public eye a little bit, but I don't really consider myself famous. I feel like there's just like so many different um, levels to fame. And I think I do have a little taste of it, but I don't consider myself famous. And, but I guess if I'm answering the question, like just, you know, in retrospect, I do have a platform. So if I'm answering it in that way, I do like it. 
um, do I fantasize sometimes about like what would have happened if I stayed in college and would have, you know, done that? Yes, I do a lot actually, but I enjoy it because I get to help people. And even this podcast, my YouTube channel, like I get to help people and relate to people and inspire people. And that's what I love about it. But there's definitely pros and cons to everything. Question number three, before making a phone call, do you ever rehearse what you're going to say and why? Absolutely. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Well, it depends who I'm calling um, and how I feel about that person. What I'm saying is if it's like an ex or something, I'm going to rehearse what I'm saying. But or if it's like somebody I'm interested in, I will be rehearsing it because I get really nervous. So I absolutely do. If it's like my friends, then no. Or my family no. Well, also, if it's like job related, I will rehearse it. But yeah, it depends who it is and how I feel about that. <laughs> Weirdly enough, I'm very awkward, but I'm not really afraid to talk to people like that I don't know. So if I'm like calling a restaurant or anything, I don't rehearse it. I just kind of, you know, I'm like, hey, what's up? Question number four, what would constitute a perfect day for you? Okay, so let's see. Probably going on any sort of hike, run, anything it's probably a run I love running which is like so crazy because who likes to run <laughs> nobody but I I ran basically my entire life competitively so I love to run it makes me feel very like safe and reminds me of high school which is weirdly enough something I like to be reminded about so yeah I like to run and I would say hanging out with my friends and probably doing anything creative, which probably would be building a Lego set. <laughs> so that um, making dinner, I would make pasta. I would make pasta and I love pasta, any sort of pasta or like, or like a burrito bowl. I saw a video of somebody like making a burrito bowl last night and it just, it scratched something in my brain and I really have been craving it. So I'd probably make a burrito bowl. Question number five, when did you last sing to yourself or to someone else? I sing to myself every day. I sing to myself every time I'm in the car, every time I'm home alone, every time I'm in the shower. I always sing, I'm always singing to myself. Cause I mean, I always have music playing. I, I just really can't sit in silence. I need to be listening to music or like watching something. I need to be listening to things because like I can't, I just can't sit in silence. So I'm always listening to music, which means I'm always singing at all times. So I have to think on my feet with these guys. Like these are not pretty planned. I don't even know these questions. So um, everything you're hearing come out of my mouth is like top of the head, instinct, it's real. Question number six, if you were able to live to the age of 90 and retain either the mind or body of a 30 year old for the <laughs> What is this question? Okay, if you were able to live to the age of 90 and retain either the mind or body of a 30 year old for the last 60 years of your life, which would you want? Oh, body. Say, <laughs> so, yeah, body. I mean, like my mind, I feel like I would like want all the knowledge of like that I'm, you know, does, does this make sense? If I'm living till the age of 90, I would like to have the mind of like have all like the wisdom and stuff that I've gathered throughout my years and you know I would also look hot <laughs> so, 30 year old body yeah I don't know why you would I don't know why you would pick the other one but whatever it's just me depends on your health I guess depends on if you smoked while you were growing up like really number seven do you have a secret hunch about how you will die um <laughs> this is crazy this is these are really really crazy questions um I I don't know specifically but I wouldn't assume it would be old age I guess that's crazy <laughs> number eight name three things you and your listeners have in common guys this is crazy um this is getting really intimate I think that what we have in common is first of all trying our best Shit, I don't know. <laughs> you guys don't tell me much about yourselves, to be fair. This is a one-sided relationship. I need you guys to hold up your end of the bargain here. Question number nine. For what in my life do I feel most grateful? My family, 
Um, my family's amazing and they're very understanding and um, they care a lot about me and they do absolutely everything in their power to make sure I'm okay all the time, which I need, unfortunately. And they're just very patient with me. So definitely my family. Hmm. <laughs> That's a crazy follow-up question. Um, question number 10, if you could change anything about the way you were raised, what would it be? Again, there's pros and cons to everything. This is like my new motto, but I would say that I ended up moving across this country, literally, when I was like 15 years old, after like being, you know, raised and surrounded by like the same people my whole life. So that was pretty hard for me. And kind of like, I, I think that was the first time that I experienced like my mental illnesses and like really was just confused and thrown off. So that was hard. But then again, like in retrospect, it brought me a lot of new people into my life and it made me grow. So again, pros and cons to everything. But yeah, I think that it would have been interesting to see how my life would have turned out if I would have stayed in Texas where I was raised and like instead of moving to Florida, you know. But again, I feel like anybody that moved to a different state in high school was, was just like, whoa, like it was just it was just a big culture shock, I guess. And like very different from where I was raised. So that was hard to like adjust to. But again, I love Florida too. So it's, it's totally cool. Question number 12. If you could wake up tomorrow having gained any one quality or ability, what would it be? I would say playing in all instruments, any of them, honestly. Um, I think that playing instruments is like such a beautiful quality to have. So I would love, I mean, I guess I could learn it, but like, it would be nice if I could just wake up tomorrow and know how to play any instruments. But yeah, I think that would be it. I think it's so cool when someone pulls out a guitar, I'm like, you're awesome. So <laughs> yeah, I would do that. Jesus, we're on question 13. <laughs> you guys know too much. You guys know too much. This is scary. <laughs> okay. Question 13. If a crystal ball could tell you the truth about yourself, your life, the future, or anything else, what would you want to know? I hate to be like corny, I guess, but I think I would want to know when or like what my love life is going to end up looking like. Again, that's like a big part of me, I think, because like, I don't know, there's just a lot of things that have happened in my life that have made me, you know, has made love very important for me. So that is what I would want to know. Question 14, is there something that you've dreamed of doing for a long time and why haven't you done it? Um, I moved to LA for social media, obviously, but I moved here to pursue acting and I did for about a year. And then I was, I was just doing like acting classes and I didn't want to really start going out for auditions until I like was kind of confident in myself. So I was acting, I was acting for like a year and then I was like, okay, no, like girl, you need some classes. <laughs> so I started taking classes for another year. And then Cooper ended up passing away and I took about the year off, like uh, maybe like eight months. I just didn't do any acting at all. So I was working on it. And then, you know, unfortunately Cooper passed away and I just took a break from pretty much all work for a while. And then I started getting back into it the beginning of this year, so January. And yeah, now I'm doing auditions and I'm actually like, doing things so I can't tell you guys more than that but yeah it's been awesome and I'm finally doing it question 15 what is the greatest accomplishment of your life whoa <laughs> that's crazy does it have to be like career-based I think the greatest accomplishment of my life is the relationships that I've made and the way I've impacted people, which in my opinion has been in a positive light. So yeah, the relationships I've made with the people around me. Question 16, what do you value most in a friendship? Um, I think what I value most in a friendship is mutual respect. But, but like what I mean by that is it can't just be one-sided. It can't just be like them talking about themselves all the time. They need to ask you as well how you are doing because it needs to be, it needs to, you know, you need to give and take. There's just like so many friendships I feel like that I like see and I witness that are just 
so one-sided. So definitely mutual respect and just making sure that you guys are both getting something out of the relationship. Question 17, what is your most treasured memory? I think that going to Mexico with Cooper and his family is my most treasured memory. Question 18, what is your most terrible memory? Uh, the day that I found out Cooper passed away. Question 19, if you knew that in one year you would die suddenly, would you change anything about the way you are living now? Absolutely. I think that I would kind of drop a couple of grudges and just mend any relationship that, like, and this goes back to middle school. <laughs> like, I would, I would just make sure that I am on completely incredible terms with everybody that has ever meant anything to me, even if I was in third grade. Question 20, what does friendship mean to you? Well, I feel like I already answered this, but yeah, just mutual respect, love, two-sided relationship. That's what it means to me. Oh my God, wow, <laughs> these are so directed towards me. Who wrote these? <laughs> Wow. Um, okay. Question 21. What roles do love and affection play in your life? I think that, wow, we're getting personal. Um, I think that Cooper passing away has made love an extremely important thing in my life. And it's just, it's made it kind of hard for me to find and maintain. It really has changed my viewpoint on like everything in my life, but especially love and I have always been a very affectionate person, weirdly enough, not with like friendships or anything, but with somebody that I love, like that I am in love with, I am an extremely affectionate person, but that's something that I don't have right now. And that's okay because I feel like I'll know when it's right. And yeah, it is extremely important to me though. <laughs> ah, this is so weird. You guys are learning a lot about me. <laughs> oh my God. Wow, are you guys falling in love with me right now? Okay, question 22. What are five positive characteristics about myself? <laughs> Number one, I am an extremely caring person and I will pour everything into you if you are in my life. Number two, I personally think this is a good thing, but I am very stubborn and I think that that's good. I think people think that that's a very bad thing, but... I think that it's a good thing to like know what you want and just not budge. It de also depends what you're being stubborn on. But for me, at least I am pretty stubborn with the people in my life because I'm just like, you're not going anywhere, you know, <laughs> you're not allowed to go. So yeah, I'm pretty stubborn. Three, I'm, I'm creative. I am extremely creative with the way that I show my love. Like if I am in a relationship with you or even a friendship with you, I will like, I'm, and you have a birthday, like I'm gonna make you something or I'm gonna write you something. I am very creative and crafty. I have really cute cats, like really cute cats and they're really sweet and they love to meet people. So if you're in my life, you're gonna be around some pretty cute cats. <laughs> um, five, I'm very open-minded and I like to try new things, so you know, I'm always down to do anything. Like if even just try anything, like if you guys want me to go surf, even though that's terrifying to me, I will do it. So I'm always down to do anything with you guys. I mean, <laughs> sorry. Whoa, this is getting crazy and intimate. Whoa, I can't believe I just said that. Are we on a date? <laughs> like, this is really crazy. <laughs> okay. Um, next, you, I'm like blushing. Like we're on a date. <laughs> okay. Question 23, how close and warm is your family? Do you feel your childhood was happier than most other people's? I do. I think I got very blessed and very lucky. Um, I have a big family and I have lots of siblings with different characteristics and they um, play very different roles in my life. So, sorry. I do think that I I got luckier than other people and I'm very blessed and very grateful. So, but it's also, it's really nice and it's it's great because I can bring my like friends and people in my life that don't have such a big family and like don't have such a warm family and I can kind of bring them to mind because my parents are incredible and they're, they just kind of love all of my friends. So it's nice because 
they can just be their parents too, you know? <laughs> Question 24. How do you feel about your relationship with your mother? My mother quite literally saved my life. Um, she, like, I, I couldn't stress it enough. Like, I was in a terrible place in January, and I ended up going to the mental hospital. And when I got out, my mom quit her job, lived across the country, and moved in with me for two months. And if she wouldn't have done that, I have no idea what, have ha what would have happened to me. But my mother saved my life, and I owe her everything. So, yeah. Question 25 is, make three true we statements each. You guys have to keep in mind that this is supposed to be like both of us doing this right now. So it's just me doing it, but it's supposed to be both of us. So instead of us doing it, I'm going to do it. But yeah, just like, for example, it's like we are both in the room feeling dot, dot, dot. You know what I mean? So I'm going to do that. <laughs> um, I, <laughs> instead of we, it's going to be I, okay? I am in this room feeling really weirdly nervous <laughs> i feel like i'm on a date right now and it's kind of freaking me out because i'm staring at a monitor <laughs> so this is weird but yeah i'm feeling nervous i am hungry and i am excited because i have a very exciting week ahead of me i'm also sorry adding an extra one i'm also really anxious i've been anxious for the past week and I'm always a little anxious, but it's been weird. It's been weird. I'm like, something's brewing. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Question 26. Complete this sentence. I wish I had someone with whom I could share. See, like, in my head, I'm like, if I need to share anything with anyone, I'll call Emma up. Like, <laughs> I will call Anna. I will call Emma. Like, I'll call my family. So I feel like I'm good. I mean, I guess romantically, maybe, but I think I'm also good there for now. Question 27. If you were going to become a close friend with your listeners, please share what would be important for them to know. I am always keeping everybody in my life on their toes. I don't like to say this anymore. I used to say that I had very bad luck, but I, I feel like saying that kind of manifested it into my life, so I don't say that anymore, but I do just have really crazy things happening to me all the time, which are like, which is why all my friends kind of encouraged me to write a book or like write um, a script because every time, like my friends are always like, your life is just like a movie. Like it's actually crazy. So yeah, I would just warn you guys that I'm going to keep you on your toes, but it's also kind of exciting. So you'll be entertained. Question 28. Tell your partner what you like about them. Be very honest this time, saying things that you might not say to someone you've just met. Hey, I guess you guys are good listeners. <laughs> you guys are really great listeners. You guys let me talk a lot, so I love that about you. <laughs> Question 29. Share an embarrassing moment in your life. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, the first year of my social media presence would be an embarrassing moment in my life. Um, anything ever posted by me when I was blonde. Yeah, that wasn't me. And I would like to just completely erase it, but I can't. So make fun of me all you want, but that was not me. I don't identify with that person. Don't know who that was or what she was going through, but why was I posting things like that? It's just like, if I've ever posted a thirst trap, that wasn't me. That was not me. So yeah, that's the embarrassing year of my life, I guess. Question 30, when did you last cry in front of another person or by yourself? In front of another person? Actually, I cried in front of my friend Lavette like four days ago. But before that, it had been like months. And then by myself last night. <laughs> I'm a big crier, I don't know. Question 31, what is a green flag you look for during a first impression with someone? Eye contact and um just listening you know like if i'm meeting you and i can tell that you're just itching to get out of there then i'm probably not going to want to talk to you again but if you're listening to me and we're both listening to each other here's the thing i don't like when people see through me i like when people look at me if that makes sense question 32 what if anything is too serious to be joked about um i would say death and mental health okay that was hypocritical. I joke about my mental health all the time. Um, I would say 
actually okay it's okay to joke about it's okay to joke about it if you're like coping with humor but if you're actually making jokes about somebody else's mental health then you're kind of an asshole sorry that was aggressive but i feel very strongly about that question 33 if i were to die this evening with no opportunity to communicate with anyone what would you most regret not having told someone and why haven't you told them yet um i think i would regret not telling everyone in my life that i love them because i don't say it enough and i'm just realizing that right now as we're speaking about it that i don't say it enough so i would regret that and i'm actually going to end this and probably text everyone and be like love you and everyone's gonna be like are you good and I'm like yeah i just wanted to say it yeah or maybe a couple people that i miss them but you know <laughs> it's okay question 34 your house containing everything you own catches fire. After saving your loved ones and pets, you have time to safely make a final dash to save any one item. What would it be and why? I'm glad you included the, the cats and pets thing because I was gonna answer that. Um, there is a box in my closet full of Cooper's shirts and hoodies and I would, I would take that. I obviously would absolutely be devastated and crushed if I lost that so I would need it and I would 100% run into a fire to grab it because you know I cherish those with everything in me question 35 of all the people in your family who are you the closest to and why I would say right now um it kind of fluctuates but right now it is my mom and why I already answered this but she she comes and spends the most time with me not not like, not because everybody else doesn't want to, but everybody else is in school and works, but she, I mean, quite literally her job is just to come and make sure I'm okay. <laughs> and she does like once a month and it is, it, it does not go unnoticed. You know, I'm very, very grateful for it. Okay, listen, we changed this question, but I just wanted to read to you guys the type of question that was actually put in here because why would you ever ask anybody this? It is, <laughs> of all the people in your family, whose death would you find the most disturbing and why? That's a crazy question to ask somebody. So I'm not answering that, but I just wanted to let you guys know that, that was the actual question because that's ridiculous and crazy. Who wrote that? That's crazy. Question 36. Share a personal problem and ask your listeners for advice on how they might handle it. You guys can obviously give me advice by just commenting down below, please, because <laughs> I actually need it. Um, I have a really bad habit of seeking validation from people. And specifically now, I think that I'm in a really weird place in my life. And I, I'm really seeking validation from the wrong people. I, I read a lot of poetry and I saw something about this and it was like, you know, even though you're cold, you can't seek warmth in a fire because a fire is still a fire, you know? And that made a lot of sense to me last night because that's what I do. And I seek validation from the wrong people or like people that have hurt me or toxic people. And I don't know how to stop doing that because I, in a weird way, it's comforting to me. So yeah, let me know how to not do that and seek validation within myself because I have a really hard time doing that. After the experiment, you're supposed to spend four uninterrupted minutes staring into each other's eyes. So I'm going to stare into your eyes now for, I'm actually not sure how long I will be told when to stop, but are you guys ready? This is really intimate. Are we about to kiss right now? Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. Did you fall in love with me? Did it work? Let me know because I think I'm in love with you. You guys are really good listeners. You're awfully quiet though. Um, okay, that was crazy. I think that if I learned as much as you guys just learned about me about somebody else, I probably would develop some sort of feeling towards them because that's a lot. And it's very, it was kind of hard to do that and to share that much about myself with you guys. So if somebody is open to doing that back, 
that's something that I would respect very much. So I think you guys should do this. Try it out. If you are on a date or something and they're open to it, this is a good way to get to know somebody. Maybe you know too much by the end of it, but that's, um, I mean, it's better to know more than little, right? That is it for this week's episode. Thank you so much for listening to Brutally Honest and spending this time with me and going on this date with me. And let me know if you fell in love with me. I'm actually very curious to know. Uh, you can find me on all social media at Sab Casada and Sabrina Casada on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe to Pass Your Bedtime on YouTube for new weekly episodes and listen to the podcast on all streaming platforms. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I love you. Bye.